everybody, Gamer Penny here, bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy XIV Online Let's Play, and we are back with Vesper. Today we're out here at Camp Overlook because we're going to continue on the main story quest. Alfino wasn't lying when he said I'd be defenseless, so I'm counting on you all to give me the time I need. Our sole purpose will be to keep you out of harm's way, so leave that to us and focus on your own task. Indeed, and should you want for Aether, you need only say the word. Gabu, did you follow us here? There's something important I want to say to the High Priest. Express state, say. Please let me come with you, please. I'm sorry, but it's too dangerous. I need you to promise me that you'll stay here where it's safe, alright? My apologies for the wait. It took time, but we have secured our audience. All unfolded as expected. At the mention of my returning their crystals in person, the kobolds suddenly remembered how keen they were to be reconciled. And so, in the glorious spirit of cooperation, we are to be received by Patriarch Zada of the Second Order, who awaits our pleasure in the navel. If you are ready, let us proceed to the Ungamoro Mines at once. What about Gabu? You know that little kid is going to follow us. Ah, a perfect, <laughs> a perfect egg for a perfect hatching tide still going on. Alright, we want to go in here. Um... Can't go that way, so we go up around here. Through here. Through here. Actually, through here. Down this way. Alright, Merlyweb. The eighth rate will bear us to our quarry. Should he take or should he make to summon Titan as I anticipate, we will halt the ceremony and restrain him. At this, all hells will break loose and we will have an army of kobolds to entertain till Elsa's work is done. Just remember, none must die. We weaken them and let Enzahar do the rest. It is time. Stay in the course, my friends. I spy calmer waters beyond this squall. Yes, let's go. Greetings, Patriarch. I am Merlwib Lufisvin, Admiral of Limsa Liminsa. I come before you to offer my sincerest apologies for the many wrongs committed by my people against you and yours. <laughs> you were foolish to come here. Stupid, unwise foolish. The Great Father shall have your souls for your folly. Aye, just as we thought. Now, Alize, quickly! You don't need to tell me! Let none pass. We must grant her as much time as we can. 
right. Duty commenced. Who are we fighting? Da da's tempering. We must protect Alize. Get over here. Too severe, I can't finish the job. Oh, just what we need. You're not alone.
send me your Aether 2. Finally, someone asked me for my Aether. Let me get up. Doesn't die, does she? Ooh, almost. All right, you. I'm gonna die. Where are you? Channel Aether. Alright, take a little more. Gotta click now. <laughs> Did we do it? Did it work? I'm sorry, but they died by your hand. 
You sacrificed them to summon Titan. that there were a cure for the victims of the Tempered. Gabu, I knew he was going to fall. What are you doing here? Patriarch, please listen to me. Hear, heed, listen. summoning is false. He only hurts us and those we love. For a long time, his voice filled my mind. He told me to do terrible things. Awful, unspeakable, terrible things. But I didn't give in to it. And you mustn't either. There's been too much pain already. So please, end the suffering. Oh, he remembers Gabu's parent. What... What have I done? Oh. We share this child's desire, Patriarch. An end to summoning, for it spells naught but misery for both our peoples. For many long years, man and kobold have feuded over territory. Pillaging and perishing for the earth beneath our feet. It may be said that we fought to survive, but what we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. I would see us set aside the past and work together for peace. It was wrong of me to hurt my own in the name of the Great Father. Sinful, evil, wrong. But that doesn't mean there can be peace between us. Men cannot be trusted. The bounty of the land was to be ours, and yours the bounty of the sea. But you broke the pact. Violated, breached, broke. Unready as we were, what choice had we but to call upon the Divine to rid ourselves of your tyranny? None, and I do not blame you for it. In violation of the spirit, if not the letter of the pact, we took your lands for our own. The fault lies wholly with us. On behalf of all Lamincens, I offer you my humblest apology. I pray you'll find it in your heart to accept it. Yet I know an apology alone will not serve to make things right. So, we will revise the pact to leave no room for doubt, and any who violate it shall face justice swift and certain. No, we won't be fooled. Not again. Please, hear me to the end. Fleeting though it was, there was a time when man and kobold abided together in harmony, in cooperation. 
In those days, your people shared the secrets of smelting. Knowledge which allowed Limsa Liminsa to thrive. Much of what we have, we owe to the Kobolds. And so, for the good of all who dwell on this isle, I wish to make you an offer. We will bear your people's wares to every corner of the world and trade them in your stead. In return, we will bring you the bounty, not only of the sea, but lands both near and far. Whatever you desire, the Navigator as my witness, you shall have it. There will be no more man and beastmen. Just the crew of the great ship that is Vilbrand. And together, we will share in the wealth of the world. If you'll only accept our hand in friendship. Mm. We want to believe you. We truly do. But we believed you before and you betrayed us. Fooled, deceived, betrayed us. There are bad men, it's true. But there are also good ones. And the ones before you are the best of them. They were always kind to me. Caring, nice, kind, and I trust them with my life. Hmm. Before I became Admiral, I was a pirate. I stole. I fought. I stained the sea red with blood. Such is my past, and I dare not forget it, however much I might want to. That is death penalty. The pistol I used to pass judgment on my own sire when he fell thrall to Leviathan and betrayed his comrades. It's loaded. If you were to point it at my head and pull the trigger, I would most assuredly die. Though it isn't much, my life is the single most valuable thing I possess. If it will suffice to atone for past wrongs, take it. A single bullet to annul the old pact and my blood to write it anew. What comes after, I entrust to this man, my second in command. I know that he will do his utmost for the happiness of all who call Vilbrand home. He's not gonna... I mean... He's not gonna do that in front of Gabu either. Oh. You shoot the ground? Like, you actually loaded it, you fool? I do not trust you. Not yet. But Gabu does. And I will trust him. Aww. So it's a good thing Gabu was here. 
stuff. You know, it's like my, I I almost had a heart attack, man. (laughs) We want you to know that we respect your faith. There's nothing wrong with giving thanks to the land which sustains you. But summoning is different. Should you hear of anyone who would attempt it, we ask that you appeal to their better judgment. Or failing that, seek our aid. We're always ready to help. Many and more of my brethren are yet enthralled to the Great Father, just as I was. If you could free them too, I would be grateful. Appreciative, thankful, grateful. I have my gun back. <laughs> Tis we who should be grateful, Patriarch. I thank you for affording us this chance. Aww. That was cool. I like the Admiral a lot. I think she's probably one of my favorite leaders out of all of them. If not my favorite one. It would seem we have found a way forward with the kobolds. Next, we will help the Second Order to free their tempered brethren from thraldom. Theirs is far from the only Order, of course, and it will take no small amount of time and effort to reach the rest. But reach them we will, however long it takes. I would say I was in your debt, but that has long been true. So instead, I will say thank you for helping us to plot a new course, not only for Limsa Lominsa, but all Eorzea. Right. Let's return to the Rising Stones. Admiral, something strange is afoot at the floating city. Breathe, man. What is it? I think it's best you see for yourself. Please, come with me. Hmm. What in the world is that? Oh! A tower! You can see it too, then. I feared I was losing my wits. One moment I was patrolling, as usual, and the next it was just... there! Yes? This is she. I am. I... I'm looking at it. What? Understood. Send the Elder Seedseer my regards. The communications officer. It seems this isn't the only tower. They've sprung up all across Eorzea. Oh. Nothing more is known, only that they appear to be of Garlean construction. Our allies on the Alamegan front are on highest alert. Forgive my directness, but would you join them? They may well need the help. Of course, Admiral. We shall make all haste. My thanks. I will return to Limsa to weigh our response. Look for Commander Hext when you arrive in Alamigo, and may the Navigator speed you on your way. 
Interesting. Grab my, grab my sweatshirt here. I'm getting I'm shivering. A little bit cold out today. It's raining and everything. I think I hit the mic with the, <laughs> the hood. Sorry about that. Okay. There. That's better. Got our sweatshirt on. Okay. Let's go to the Alamegan Quarta. So I definitely, um, when Endwalker came out, I skipped all of these. Like, I, I did them without watching the cutscenes or anything. So that's why these are all kind of new, new to me, so I kind of like that. Like, not knowing <laughs> what's coming next. Well, I know what comes next, but you know what I mean. Thank you for coming so soon. I'll send for Commander Aldin at once, and we can decide what to do about these infernal towers. Ah, Roka Preserve! What is that? Asahi? It can't be. The palace! After them! You're here, good. Well, well, well! To be received by such an illustrious cast! <gasps> Why? Even the hero of the peace is here! I feel quite starstruck. Listen, Fan Daniel. Is that... Asahi? His body more like. You don't fool us. Oh! You saw straight through it! Anyone would think you dealt with Asians before. <laughs> Permit me to introduce myself. I am Fan Daniel, and may I say what a pleasure it is to finally make your acquaintance. Fan Daniel. What do you want? My. Straight to business, is it? Suit yourself. It is my intention to recreate the final days. To which end I have distributed a collection of rather ingenious devices, or towers, which will, in time, give rise to the grandest of spectacles. The final days? But it was the Asians who labored to prevent them. You're quite right, though I would expect no less from one responsible for eliminating my unsundered colleagues. He's crazy. Honestly, the three of them were obsessed with restoring the one true world. As a sovereign individual, however, I never had much interest in such things. I mean, why bother when you're just another sundered minion? Admittedly, Elidibus was not convinced by that argument. But thanks to you, I'm finally free of his incessant nagging. Free to use my powers as I see fit, to fulfill my heart's desire. He's crazy. And my heart's desire is to lay this half-broken world to waste, leaving nary a fleck of dust behind. What? Why would you want such a thing? Because I want wretched creatures who ask such meaningless questions to die! You! And you! And you! I want you all to die! 
And I want to die too. Oh, yes. I want to die and take everyone with me in a paroxysm of pain and suffering. But why? I'm different, you see. From the ancients who clung to dear life and from you. So don't bother trying to reason with me. You will find I have no reason, or creed, or any such tripe. I just want to destroy the world. But please do resist with all your might. It will add to my enjoyment. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes peeled, for the curtains have risen on the spectacle to end all spectacles. We, the Telophoroi, shall be your performers and this very star our stage. The Telophoroi. And Daniel. Ah, but I nearly forgot. I have a message for you. <clears throat> My esteemed patron, Lord Xenos, eagerly awaits you at the heart of the chaos. While I wish only to destroy the world, he exists solely to relive a certain, hmm, transcendent moment with you. And it is for that reason he would reduce all to ash. Pray see to it his dreams do not go unfulfilled. For if you should disappoint him, my trusty companion here, whom I've dubbed Lunar Bahamut, will burn your cities and everyone in them. Lunar Bahamut. Everyone out! My men will tend to the blaze. Hmm. Interesting. Lise, you okay, girl? Thank goodness everyone's safe. We managed to put out the fire, though not quickly enough to save the garden. Robon, can I leave it to you to send word to the Alliance? I'm going to take a unit and investigate the tower. We need to find out what it's for. We'll go with you. No, you won't. You'll rest. From what Merlewib tells me, you're due some time off duty. Should we learn anything about the tower, we'll be sure to share it with you. Until then, I want you to rest. Very well, but if you need our help, don't hesitate. And take care, both of you. Speak with Kryl in the Rising Stone. Dang, we're getting into Endwalker! <laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> Alright, Kryl. Oh, it pains me to run by all these blue star- blue plus sign quests. I need to- do something about that <laughs> in the future. Ah, you're back. You're back too. Good. We've received the reports from the Alliance. Since we are all here, perhaps those who bore witness to the events in Alamigo could treat us, treat the rest of us to the first-hand account. No sooner do we overcome one problem than another appears. It would all seem tediously predictable but for the endless variety of our foes. 
This Fan Daniel sounds even more unhinged than his patron. Unhinged, perhaps, but no fool. For all his pantomime theatrics, he gave away little about his plot. We know only that he intends to recreate the final days and that the towers will somehow facilitate this. He also called his dragon Lunar Bahamut. Let's not forget that little detail. And the creature did resemble the descriptions I've seen of the Elder Primal. That may be, but the fact that it answered to Fan Daniel would suggest they are not one and the same entity. I think it more probable that it is some manner of simulacrum born of Asian magics. Whatever it is, for now we can but work closely with the Alliance and remain vigilant. I believe that concludes our news. What of yours, Yerstola? I have been seen to the Sultana. Knowing how quick the immortal flames are to dispose of their tempered, I judged it best to provide them with the cure first. As soon as I had sufficiently recovered, I traveled to Ulda and delivered the Porxies to her grace, along with de detailed instructions on their use. Yet my visit chanced to co coincide with the arrival of some troubling tidings. The immortal flames had been on the cusp of agreeing to a truce with the Amalja when negotiations abruptly collapsed. The Amalja claimed that a number of their kind have been abducted, and that men are responsible. Not as known of the perpetrators as yet, but as the immortal flames went about investigating the abductions that came upon one of Fan Daniel's towers. On the subject of the towers, you may be interested to learn they are not an exclusively Eorzean phenomenon. According to the Alliance, they have been sighted as far afield as Yangsha. And it would seem unreasonable to assume they are then it would seem reasonable to assume that they are everywhere. We simply have not found them. Well, as you said yourself, we can do little for now save remain vigilant. And since we are dealing with a dragon, ostensibly at least, I believe it would behoove us to enlist the aid of the, an authority on such foes. Estinian. Estinian. Now just a moment, if he could be persuaded to lend us his lance, I would be the first to welcome it. The truth is, we still struggle even to find him. You let me and Cryo worry about that. We'll sniff him out no matter where he's hiding. If indeed he is hiding, we have ways of locating him regardless. So if there are no objections, we shall depart at once. <laughs> And I was like, I'm like best friends with this Dini and I can't even get him to come. <laughs> well, rather than sitting around, I think I might go to each of the city-states and ed educate them on the use of porksies. They would doubtless appreciate it, but might you consider taking a moment to rest before leaving? You would be fresher for the tasks ahead. Well, my friend, our moment of triumph did not last long. Was ever the way the world often needs saving. And save it we shall. I, for one, do not intend to allow a nihilistic madman to take us all to the grave with him. Not when the future holds such promise. Nay, I will do all in my power to protect those whom I hold dear, just as you have always done. Meanwhile, somewhere in the locks. The scouts should have been back by now. I'm gonna go and find them. No, Lise. Oh, 
Thank goodness for that. Yikes, yikes. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. Look at, look at Xenos just sitting there with his sword. <laughs> He's such a weirdo. <laughs> The piles have been driven as planned, and the first of the beasts has roared to life. <laughs> Moreover, I am pleased to report that preparations are well underway for the rest. Ere long, chaos shall reign over all the land, as befits the final days. Call it what you will, so long as my friend returns to me, fangs bared and claws sharpened, I care not. Of course, my lord. By strange coincidence, your dear friend chanced to be present when I made my declaration. I took the liberty of informing her that you await her coming. Though I confess, I may have singed her a little in the process. <laughs> and why do you tell me this? Are you in such a hurry to die? Ah. My apologies. I must guard my tongue lest it be the end of me. Though, there is something to be said for such a glorious death. Better to fall to one who has it all than falter before an inferior. Huh. I shall keep it in mind as a contingency. For now, however, I shall proceed with the plan. My lord. <laughs> I must find myself a new weapon. One worthy of our long awaited reunion. Oh, dang. You can just step on a sword like that and break it. He's powerful. All right. Well, I think with that, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and end this episode here. And when we come back, we'll continue on the main story quest. We're getting closer and closer to Endwalker, guys. So I want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series. If you do want to see more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye, everyone.